the first session for today <coughs> is called the um, one sec is called the individual and the institution restoring faith in political process i don't think uh, i am a kind of an individual mm -hmm. i'm just a speck of uh, uh, that kind of individual left mm -hmm. and strolling it between uh, trotting between institutions institutions of family institutions of uh, gender maybe uh, institutions of politics and uh, journalism so as a journalist uh, there's no question of uh, having a conflict with the political institution because in malayalam when I joined my organization, there was no question of entrusting a woman with political reporting. Mm -hmm. Because at that time, uh, after joining, uh, after I became a, 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 a subreditor enrolled in the pay scale, I tried to write a middle piece on a political incident and uh, handed it over to my news editor. Then he just uh, looked at it and he said, okay, we'll see whether it, it can be published. <laughs> we'll keep, keep it aside. And then later he said, uh, there's a problem. Actually, our readers are not used to women reporting on politics. So uh, they may not believe uh, that uh, uh, it is actually written by a woman. <laughs> so uh, this is the condition. But surely when... Uh, most of my reporting, I was basically uh, placed at the desk because women are uh, useful at the desk, no? <laughs> when, when we look at conflict, we tend to forget that conflict is not a grand construct. It's a, it begins in a very simple way. So people in Central India or Eastern and Southern India can be talking about feeling conflicted and feeling angry or feeling done out of for being denied or being uh, done out of very, very simple needs, which mm -hmm. is basically uh, which we in the, in the urban spaces take for granted freedom of speech and expression. Mm. And I'm, I hope I'm expressing mm. loads of freedom in that respect. Um, they take, they want simple dignities like respect. Mm. They want simple dignities like delivery of the criminal justice system. Uh, when you go, you're delivered the justice that you're promised. They want livelihood. They want a, a respect of their identities. Um, so in, in some ways, that is a common factor between what is happening in central India in the Maoist areas, for instance, uh, and what is happening in the far east of India. In, in, in the, there we have eight states there, of which I think three are right now deeply conflicted, and the others are more or less sorted the, their, um, their situation out. And I suppose uh, you have to bring into this equation um, something that actually both of you are deeply involved in, which is to do with the media and how we know what is going on mm. and what's happening. Mm. And there is, I suppose, in a sense, a kind of battleground, if you like, all over the world in practically every country mm. um, on how the knowledge of the world around us mm. comes to us and how it's mediated and how it's controlled mm. and how it's manipulated, mm. uh, the knowledge of what's going on now and the knowledge of what has mm. happened. Mm. Um, and it's not special to Sri Lanka, but you can certainly see it there, that um, political actions are taken and then there are efforts in which one rewrites history. Mm. Um, and there is a kind of feeling, and I suppose it, it maybe it does work, I don't know, but uh, through, throughout the ages, people have tried to re rewrite history and people who in a sense win in any sort of conflict have a greater chance of rewriting uh, rewriting history uh, and given long enough people forget so I think the you know the biggest issue I suppose is memory um, and that's the way I suppose I approach it as a writer because as a writer you're you're dealing with memory that's all we ha if we have no memory we have nothing mm -hmm. and um, that I think is interesting.